In the 17th century, French philosopher and mathematician Blaise Pascal proposed an idea, a kind of pragmatic argument as to why people should bet their lives upon God's existence. It came later to be known as Pascal's Wager and can be summed up in the following question. What if you're wrong? What if you, being a disbeliever, are wrong about God's existence and he does actually exist? Okay, the argument goes as follows that from Pascal's perspective, he was a Christian apologist. And so from his perspective, he thought that if the believer was right and the non-believer was wrong, then the non-believer, the one who's wrong, is gonna suffer an eternity in hell. Whereas if it was the other way around, if the non-believer is correct and the believer is wrong, then the person who's wrong in that situation doesn't suffer any consequences at all. So by weighing up each side, it seems most logical that you should place your trust in God's existence. Now I'm sure you've heard this before, it's very popular among theists when arguing against atheists, yet peculiarly not when arguing against people who happen to have a different faith. And I think this highlights the first contention that I have with Pascal's wager, which is that it doesn't specify any particular God. If you're a Christian using Pascal's wager, I could just as easily ask you what if you're wrong and Muhammad truly is the last prophet of God, or if you're a Muslim, the same could be said but vice versa. The first commandment issued to Moses on Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus is thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay, the God of the Old Testament is a self-admittedly jealous God. You only have to read a few select verses from the Old Testament to realize that God is never particularly happy when people decide to pray to the wrong deity. Okay, the first commandment is thou shalt have no other gods before me. Not thou shalt not deny me, not thou shalt believe in me, but thou shalt have no other gods before me. And this implies that which god you decide to pray to is at least as important and possibly more important than choosing to pray to a god at all. And in this respect, atheists might actually be better off than people who are part of the wrong religion. Okay, if you get to the pearly gates and you're stood there as an atheist next to a Muslim, God might look at you and think, well, at least you said, I don't know. You chose not to believe in this God, but that was just based upon lack of evidence. Whereas the Muslim was praying to the wrong God. And who do you think he'd look upon more harshly? But okay, let's give Pascal the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that if there was a God that existed, it would be the Christian God. Let's say that he's got the philosophy right. You still got a pretty big problem on your hands. And that is the fact that you can't choose what to believe in. Okay, to illustrate my point, imagine I asked you to start believing that Australia does not exist. Okay, I want you to believe that Australia is not there. Okay, you can tell yourself that Australia doesn't exist. You can tell your friends and family that it doesn't exist. You can ignore photos and videos and you could never book a holiday there, but could you really believe that Australia doesn't exist when you know the contrary to be true? I don't think you could. And by this, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that I know that God does not exist with the same certainty that I know that Australia does exist. I'm just using it as an analogy to uh, point out that you cannot believe something just because you want to. You have to genuinely be convinced of it or genuinely know it to be true. Or as Richard Dawkins put it in The God Delusion, believing is not something you can decide to do as a matter of policy. I can decide to swear on a stack of Bibles that I believe every word inside them, but that can't make me actually believe it if I don't. Pascal's wager can only ever be an argument for feigning belief in God. If I were laying on my deathbed, terrified of the prospect of hell, but not quite able to truly convince myself of God's existence, I could baptize myself, I could become a Christian. But when I stood before God, he'd see right through it if he was truly omniscient. He'd know that the only reason I'd converted to Christianity, the only reason that I'd chosen to believe in him was out of fear and out of weighing up my chances rather than love and adoration. Do you really think that if God exists, while there are people who devote their entire lives to worshiping him, who he lets into heaven, he would also permit entry to people who on their deathbeds just decided, yeah, why not? I don't think so. And God forbid you get to heaven and it's Allah and the prophet Muhammad, and you've just converted to Christianity, well then you'd really be in the shit. It seems to me that any intelligent God would far more appreciate intellectually honest skepticism than a half-hearted ass kissing just in case. But let's not forget that even if not, if God truly does require me to believe in him to get into heaven, he could easily achieve this, okay? I might not be able to tell you what would convince me of God's existence, but if there's anybody that does know, it's him, the omniscient creator. This means one of two things. Either God can't make me believe in him, which doesn't make any sense. This is an omnipotent, omniscient being. He knows exactly what to do and has the means to do it. 
But that only leaves the option that he doesn't want me to believe, that he's preventing me from believing in him. In which case I would submit to this God when standing before him at the pearly gates, that it's his fault that I'm an unbeliever. I, I will not be blamed for my infidelity, I will not kiss the feet of such an evidently apathetic, or perhaps worse still, capriciously malignant supernatural thug who chose to reveal himself to some, but knowingly denied such a revelation to me, and then has the audacity to claim that I should have to pay for it. Whose God is this, and why would anybody wish to be a slave to his will? So there are the majority of my main contentions to Pascal's wager, but of course this is a discussion, I'd love to hear what you have to say, do leave a comment. Um, I did put out a tweet asking people what their best response is to the question of what if you're wrong, um, and I got quite a lot of responses, so feel free to go and check that out, but the most popular one that I got by far was this idea of well, God can't expect me to believe in him if he didn't provide the evidence, especially seeing as he would know precisely what evidence he would have to supply in order to make me believe. This was the most popular contention that people had, and it's probably the one that I agree with the most. And look, the question is flawed from the outset, really. Pascal argues that the person who's on God's side has nothing to lose if they're wrong. But here's the thing, if you came up to me with some kind of moral theory that you wanted me to apply to my life and try out, then I might say, okay, sure, what have I got to lose? But if you start getting specific, if you tell me that I need to worship and submit myself to a supernatural deity, if, if you want me to think that a woman's testimony in court is worth half that of a man's, if you want me to deny science, if you want to limit my choice of sexual partner by 50%, if you want to curtail my freedom in such a manner, well then I'm sorry, but you're going to have to do slightly better than what if you're wrong. But anyway, I have been Alex O'Connor, or Cosmic Skeptic. Um, do be sure to let me know if you have any suggestions for video topics that you want to see, leave them in the comments down below. I now write at CosmicSkeptic.com, so be sure to go and check that out. You can follow me on social media here, uh, you can support the channel on Patreon if you feel so inclined. I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.